Today, I'm talking with my favorite leader, Chief Transformation Officer for a Big Five Strategy Consulting, Managing Director for Leadership Matters, Mr. Anand Pillai. Let's welcome him to our Bliss 2021. Good evening, sir. I'm so evening, Raju. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm so delighted and privileged to talk with you today. We're so glad you are here with us for this 2021. Before we start, sir, can you just share with us some of your childhood memories? Raju, thank you for asking me that question. See, when I look at childhood memories, uh, we belong to a very large family. Uh, I had uh, uh, three sisters, three brothers, and uh, we were in a kind of a uh, joint uh, uh, a nuclear family uh, where uh, we had our uncles, our cousins. Uh, my grandfather was only one kilometer uh, away, my other uncle. So uh, my childhood memories is always one of uh, uh, joy, uh, friendship, camaraderie. And I would look forward to festivals for three reasons. Uh, you know, I really, at that point in time, in the early stages, I was not so worried about the religious aspect of the festival. Uh, but I really look forward to festival for three reasons, as I mentioned. First thing is, we will get a fresh set of clothes. Uh, so I said, wow, <laughs> you know, uh, good time for getting clothes. And the second one is good food, particularly sweets. Uh, I, I think I was born with a sweet tooth. Uh, so I would love all these uh, uh, sweets, whether it is jangir or jalebi mm -hmm. or Mysore Pak or, uh, you know, all these fantastic uh, uh, sweets. That was the second reason. Mm -hmm. And the third reason, which is where your childhood memories uh, brings me, is festival time is the time where we get together with friends, with cousins, and we go and visit people, and family people uh, come. So uh, uh, those childhood memories were uh, on the personal side, that one. Uh, very, very joyful, very, uh, very much togetherness. The other part of my childhood memories, which uh, really, uh, you know, gives me a let, sense of satisfaction, uh, is the fact that uh, uh, I actually, my father used to tell me, I later on realized also, that unlike normal children, I would love to go to school. I would get up and uh, get ready, uh, you know, or want to get ready. When I was very much younger, my mother used to dress me up and uh, my sister, me, my sister, uh, went to the same school. My sister is elder. Uh, and then after uh, two years, my younger brother also came. So it was one big gang. And uh, I don't know if you know this kind of a system. Uh, we used to go in a rickshaw. Uh, you know, there will be other school children also. Uh, so uh, it was fun all the way, you know. And then you go to school. And uh, so childhood memories was that. Uh, uh, great uh, friendship, great relatives, great festivity, uh, great family, uh, and great fun. Uh, uh, and uh, I also uh, remember, uh, for example, in school, uh, some of the, these are the positive things that I mentioned. One, uh, not, I wouldn't say negative, but it was a kind of a turning point in my uh, life. I fortunately or unfortunately studied in a school uh, which was next to Bangalore Military School. And uh, the school uh, had uh, principals who had an army background or an air force background or a navy background uh, because it was a what is known as an Anglo-Indian school. Uh, so it was either a Britisher who was the principal or um, a person from Australia who was a principal. And this person, uh, you know, in these countries, uh, they have these compulsory uh, postings and all that. Uh, so they came from an army background and very strict uh, discipline in the school. So the reason I'm bringing you this background is somewhere around third standard, uh, uh, I was told that I will be not fit for physical exercise in a very um, curt and crude manner. How it happened was all of us as boys, uh, we were lined up and uh, this uh, P physical education instructor, he was a retired uh, army captain uh, so all that he did was he was sitting in the uh, uh, ground and he was uh, going one leg to the other and we were all boys standing. He had a ruler 
and the ruler he will slide uh, in uh, in between our legs if it touched our knees he will knock the knee and he said get out of the line and it so happened that it gently touched uh, my uh, knee the ruler and then he said get out you are not fit for physical education uh, for physical exercise and i asked him later on why he said you have got knock knees uh, now unfortunately i don't really have what is medically known as knock knees Uh, but uh, nevertheless in his terminology i had knock knees and since he uh, in that particular uh, class i was the only person who was kicked out of the line and everybody started uh, nicknaming me knock knees knock knees you know and that kind of grew in on me this was one thing the other thing that happened also was uh, i was a very inquisitive student in the class so i would ask a lot of questions Uh, in the history class and all my history teacher got very irritated with me and she would never be able to answer the questions uh, so uh, she said uh, first uh, off statement fools ask more questions than the wise can answer you know and i made uh, it difficult for myself uh, by uh, rather than keeping quiet uh, i took that i said madam thank you for uh, explaining why i got low marks in the last test paper so she said uh, you got low marks in the last test paper because you did not study i said madam you answered the question i got low marks in the test paper because fools ask more questions than the wise can answer uh, so she got really angry uh, very angry with me and uh, then uh, uh, she made a statement uh, anand you think you are a genius but let me tell you you are neither a genius nor a genius so uh, i had a habit and this uh, was in fourth standard i had a habit at that time any time i come across a new word i would look it up in the dictionary so for me imagine a fourth standard boy uh, both the word genius and the word genius was new so i went to the dictionary and when i went to the dictionary i found the meaning of genius but there was no word for genius <laughs> so i said okay i don't know what that other one she said i am neither a genius nor a genius since i don't know the meaning of genius i will not focus on that let me focus on becoming a genius <laughs> that is one who excels in their field and mm-hmm. i gave you already i could not excel in my physical exercise our school had three kinds of um, uh, grading system curricular activities extra curricular activities and co curricular activities co curricular activities are debating essay writing they are not part of the curriculum but they add to the curriculum you know extra curricular activity uh, would be photography and uh, uh, sports and other things but co curricular uh, would be debating uh, essay writing public speaking uh, team leadership and so on so i was already ruled out in physical education so i started focusing on uh, being this and uh, by god's grace long story short by the time i graduated i was judged the best all round student in the school much to uh, the discredit uh, of my several other colleagues who were all very good in sports yeah. uh, and they got marks in that but i got more marks in the curricular and extra curricular activities so to sum it up i had good things but the so called bad things also uh, for example that history teachers remark and the physical education uh, teachers remark i took it positively and uh, it helped me thank you raju for asking me that question yes sir yeah i mean this remind me of uh, one statement that i heard from you long time ago uh, the statement is this sir the difference between the extra um ordinary and the ordinary is that little extra right yes. so that little extra makes anybody extra ordinary so i really yes. uh, you know so glad to hear your childhood memories and how you know what made you to excel and you know the criticism around you uh, has uh, you know made a commitment in you to become a, you know focus on the genius such yes. a wonderful story sir um sir um so actually in your childhood days was there a time where you thought about hope is it about hope for your life uh, was there a situation in your life where you felt i don't have any hope uh, 
Can you explain that to us if you have any? Uh, Raju, see, uh, I mean, my story is also available on YouTube. Uh, while all these positive things are there, unfortunately, uh, when I got into the, the these two incidents that I referred to was in fourth standard, in fifth standard, uh, something crazy happened in our family. There was a kind of a family discussion uh, on property division because it's a uh, kind of a, a nuclear family. In a nuclear family, everybody is there. My father is the youngest of four brothers. And uh, so this uh, conversation happened and I was a small boy. Uh, uh, and the conversation was around what will we do with that property and what will we do with this property. My father's elder brother, who was about 12 uh, years older than him, uh, and some of his cousins, uh, they told, you're a prosperous person, you don't need the property. And they said, uh, and he also agreed because, you know, he's uh, 14 years younger than, or 12 years younger than the brother. He's mm -hmm. almost like a father when he says that, you listen. So yeah. he agreed. And uh, when he told this uh, to my mother, my mother got very upset. She said, what is this? Why did you agree uh, for them to uh, not give you the property? Yes, you may not need the property, but uh, you definitely uh, can take it and give it to somebody else. And we've got children, you know, we need uh, it to be. He said, no, no, my brother said that. So she said, go back and ask. When he went back to, and then there was a family meeting, when he went back to ask them, uh, they had already divided the property. In fact, quite strangely, um, they had sold the property without his consent. Oh. Uh, and uh, those days, you know, signature and all this um, biometrics and all was definitely yeah. not there. You can comfortably do it. Uh, they, they sold it. And uh, of course, he did not want to contest against his own brothers. He said, uh, I want to ask you to please give it back to me. And he said, uh, it is my right. The moment he used that word, it is my right, uh, they got rattled and they called for another meeting. And at that time, uh, they called for the meeting and they cast an evil spirit into him through a line. Um, and he came from that meeting uh, home uh, and uh, we gave uh, him uh, the dinner. And uh, in that uh, dinner, it was rice. He threw away the rice. Uh, he said, you're giving me worms to eat. Said, What's wrong, daddy? I mean, it's not worms. Uh, so, but for his eyes, it was worms. Uh, so that was the effect of the evil spirit. To cut the long story short, uh, there was a lot of torture for him. Uh, he was possessed uh, on and off. And, uh, you know, I mean, ours was a very traditional Hindu uh, family. Uh, so the educated section of the family would say he is mentally disturbed or mentally disoriented. And we were in Bangalore, and in Bangalore, uh, we have the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, which is a really premium thing. So he would be taken uh, uh, there. But the religious section of the family would say, no, 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 nothing is wrong with his brain. Uh, he's been possessed. And therefore, they will do puja, they will do rituals, they will beat him. And, you know, uh, and I asked, why are you beating my father? He said, no, no, we're not beating your father. We're beating the spirit yeah. uh, and so on. So things like this happened and I was totally sh disturbed. What is this? Why should this happen to my daddy? And for me, my daddy was also my friend. Um, even though uh, it was a father-son relationship, we enjoyed very close. He used to take me for all the business meetings and everything. And uh, he would share a lot of his personal frustrations, everything. And now I see my daddy different, mm -hmm. behaving differently. And a few months after that, uh, he actually committed suicide. Um, he hung himself. And uh, I thought that that was the first time. I was only a 10-year-old boy when that happened. And uh, then from that time, 1970 to 1978, every two years, a major death would happen in our family. 1973, uh, my sister... Uh, she, uh, you know, um, out of a dowry, she, she got married and traditional dowry was expected and all that more money was expected. My mother went to call her for first Diwali. Uh, you know, the tradition is uh, the girl comes to the parents' house for the first uh, few festivals mm -hmm. and all that. And uh, my brother-in-law said, uh, you need to give so much jewels and all, and some argument happened. My mother went back without my sister. And for a Pongal or Shankranti, uh, my mother again uh, went to my sister's house to call her. 
and uh, then again quarrel happened this is this that and all that um, and uh, one sentence my brother in law said uh, was yes i will send her but when she comes back she will have to come back with all those jewels and don't extra gold and all that my yeah. mother said yes we will give but don't make it condition that when we when you come back already we have given whatever we should have given more can be given but that's not a problem but uh, don't make it a condition he said no i will send her only on this condition if she does not have the gold she will not be admitted in the family my mother uh, was very disturbed she went back crying yeah. seeing my mother cry my elder sister said i am the reason for her uh, sorrow i've never seen my mother cry uh, and i uh, you know i because of me she is crying so what she did is uh, there is a particular pesticide called tick 20 okay to kill um, uh, insects they had uh, whatever two or three bottles of that she took that undiluted directly and drank it and ended her life uh, so that was in 1973 two years after that uh, in 1975 uh, 76 uh, uh, i Don't remember. I think yeah, it was seventy six. Um, my aunt, my mother's younger sister, uh, she um, uh, uh, she was almost uh, my foster mother because she had no children. Uh, and the reason why she had no children was because uh, she um, uh, was uh, having a cancer of the uterus, uh, so the tumor. And uh, they operated the tumor, and after ten years of marriage, it was concluded that okay, she will never have any children. uh so a few months after that uh, my uh, uncle uh, or my chitappa yeah. uh, he said i want to marry again uh, my auntie said no problem uh, definitely you can uh, marry i'll be very happy uh, and when you get a child i'll be you know uh, taking care of everything some argument happened uh, the would be uh, the people who proposed the girl they said we can give you our daughter only when you send your wife away first wife away Oh. because there will be quarrels and all yeah, that yeah 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 uh, you know there'll be the, no my wife is not at that till they said and one day um, uh, in that uh, impasse um, i think a few weeks after that news came that this girl who was proposed to my uh, achitapa was actually engaged to somebody mm. so my uncle you know kind of a fit of uh, i don't know frustration or whatever he yeah. said you don't live you don't let others live Oh. So my aunt uh, took that seriously. She went to the kitchen, um, and those days, uh, you know, gas and all was not there. Yeah. It was kerosene. Yeah. Uh, so she poured the kerosene on herself and burnt herself. Mm-hmm. When I saw that, I was holidaying in their family. I saw that. Oh man, what is this? You know. And uh, then two years uh, uh, after that, um, 1970, my father passed away. A few years after that, my sister passed away. Then my aunt passed away. and then in the year 1979 yeah. uh, 78 actually it began 78 uh, my sister younger sister who at that point in time was just about 16 years old yeah. was diagnosed with cancer bone mm-hmm. cancer unheard of yeah. uh, you know, and uh, so we took her to various uh, places in bangalore we have a uh, kidwai uh, memorial institute of cancer oncology kidwa memorial institute of oncology we took her there and the doctor said uh, first of all we we'll have to amputate the leg and even after amputation uh, we went back to first we took a long time to give permission for that amputation yeah, yeah. Uh, because you know girl i mean yeah. who will marry her? all sorts of things was happening yeah. but uh, the doctor told uh, you we'll have to take a decision either the leg or the life and this is a statement we made so i think about took almost uh, one and a half months for us to come to that conclusion there is something called indemnity bond we will have to sign only then they will operate right. uh, so my mother after that time of reflection she went back and said yes uh, we will sign the indemnity bond but by that time the cancer cells had spread and he said even if i amputate she will live only for about four or five months uh, that shock was deeply disturbing for me uh, so I said, man, what is this? You know, yeah. everybody is dying. Yeah, uh, that's when I lost hope. Yeah, um, because and uh, these are not. I mean, there were other deaths in the family. Some uncle died, or some yeah. uh, 
grandfather died or something like that. But these were close family members. Yeah. My own father, my own elder sister, yeah. my own aunt, which is my mother's younger sister, also my foster uh, mother, and my younger sister. Elder sister, younger sister, yeah. father, and uh, aunt. Uh, that was too much for me. And uh, that's when I also said, oh, oh. hope is gone. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, I also contemplated too. Right, right. I mean, it is really uh, disturbing, right? Uh, especially when we, uh, you know, look at the culture, you know, where we come from. And these things, you know, people religiously do certain things to, you know, harm people. Uh, all those things is really uh, disturbing. But sir, in this situation, uh, can you share us a time which brought hope in your life? What happened was, uh, uh, I, uh, on one particular day, uh, uh, in fact, what happened uh, as a result of uh, my sister's cancer, I got very frustrated. Uh, I said, I don't want to live to see another death in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, because it was concluded. In the other cases, uh, it was all untimely. Uh, because suicide is untimely. You don't know. Uh, whereas in this case, we knew that she is going to die. And uh, uh, if you know anybody in your family or if you know friends mm -hmm. in the family, the last stages of cancer is a very painful mm -hmm. uh, process, both for the uh, patient and for the others. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, the doctor said the treatment is worse than the disease. Uh, you know, the hair uh, yeah. is all uh, gone and you become uh, yeah. very different. Mm -hmm. So I said, I don't want to see my sister in that condition, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I will uh, run away from the family. You know, I don't want to see. But uh, when I run away, I'll go and die somewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to know where I will die because my sister's death is inev inevitable. I will also die. But I gave the excuse to my mother saying that there is too much of um, disturbance in the family. I'm not in a position to study. So I'm going to go to my friend's place to uh, study. But I never gave my friend's address to uh, mm -hmm. my mother. Uh, so, but my idea was not going to study. My idea was to go and incognito uh, die. Uh, but nothing, uh, you know, it was, I was still inconclusive. And about three months later, after this uh, thing, I came back home uh, to get one book, which I had uh, forgotten. I had taken all the books, but one particular uh, physics book I had not taken. So I came to take that. There was a huge crowd in the house, huge crowd. I mean, in the street, in fact, forget in the house, in the street, uh, I said, man, what happened? Uh, and as soon as I walked into the crowd, everybody was cursing me, what kind of a boy, what kind of this one, and all that. And uh, then I realized that my sister had passed away three days before that. So, and they said, what kind of a son are you? And all that. I came home and some of them even caught me by the Caller and shook me up and said, you are the elder brother, what is this? Mm -hmm. But little did they realize the struggles that I was going through because I mourned my sister's death. And we have, like many customs, uh, the third day, that particular ceremony was there, third day ceremony. Yeah. Then, of course, the fifth day, then the ninth day, then the eleventh day and so on. Uh, all relatives will come and there will be something or the other. Uh, I, I, I said, okay, I'll wait till all the crowd goes and uh, I will also uh, end my life. So on March 14th, um, 1979, uh, I uh, said, I'm going to end my life also. And uh, since I had seen at least three forms of suicide, one is through uh, hanging, uh, the other is uh, through poison and the third one uh, through burning yourself. I looked at the least painful way, which was my hanging. And so I thought I'll die the way my father died. Uh, and the same hook where my father uh, in the ceiling hung uh, himself, I also tied the rope and uh, I was about to put my neck into the noose. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, just around that time, diagonally opposite, there was a cupboard, my study cupboard, in which there was a book. Uh, given to by my school, called New Testament. Yeah. I studied in a Christian school, so New Testament. I never bothered to read that. I said, oh, yeah. I'm a Hindu, why should I read all that? Yeah. Uh, so I did not bother. But now I'm going to die. 
Uh, and uh, I said, okay, let me read that and die. Uh, you know, I used to go for all our religious uh, functions. And uh, yes, let me explore this also. Yeah. And uh, do what is necessary. Uh, and then, of course, I can peacefully die, at least knowing that I read something good before I die. So I wanted to go straight into, uh, I, I liked the Lord Jesus uh, as a boy. I never liked Christians, right? let me tell you that. Yeah. Uh, to disappoint you, I hated Christians in fact. But yeah. I liked the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, oh, God, here is this man, you know, such a meek and mild person. And all the stories uh, they used to tell in the school about how uh, Jesus healed the multitude, Jesus fed uh, 3,000 at one point in time, 5,000 at one point in time. He restored sight to the blind. He restored uh, hearing to the deaf. Uh, he healed the leper. All those things. You know, so I had a very positive uh, opinion about Jesus. Uh, although I never had the same about Christians. I said, okay, let me read about Jesus and then die. So I thought in the book there will be some kind of an introduction um, where this is where the story of Jesus begins. Right. But there was, in the table of content, there was no such introduction right. at all. It was just the names of individuals. Mm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and yeah. so on. Oh, man, what kind of a book is this? Yeah, you've got names of individuals here. But there's no, I went from beginning to end, there was no name of Jesus at all. Yeah. Uh, I said, how can you write a book without a chapter on Jesus? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, man, it's all Matthew is there, Mark is there, Luke. I don't know who these characters were. Yeah. But I'm looking for Jesus. It's not there. Uh, and I started to read the first one, uh, Matthew. And it was all in uh, Tao and the and all. And it was violating what I would call biology. Because yeah. it was, and so-and-so begat so-and-so. That means a man uh, gave birth to uh, something. That's how it comes yeah, in the King yeah. James, uh, English. I said, man, what is this? You know, how can men beget men? You know? So I was getting confused. So I said, I almost wanted to throw away that. But in the process of flipping the pages, I came across something very interesting. And that was a heading in the early part of the pages itself. Rather than the table of contents, which did not give me any hope, I looked at the, uh, that particular page, which said, where to find help when? Mm -hmm. When you are in need of happiness. Yeah. or were in your need of guidance. And then, in that same thing, there was a section what the Bible talks about virtues, you know, okay. major virtues, love, joy, peace, kindness and all. I said, okay, let me go look at it. My name Anand in Sanskrit is the ultimate form of joy and peace. There is no English equivalent for that. Uh, unfortunately, everybody says English is a great language. With yeah. all due respect, English is not a great language uh, because it does not have words for a lot of, uh, uh, so particularly Sanskrit and all that. Yeah. So joy uh, or anand, e equal translation is not there. The closest is possibly peace and joy. Yeah. So I thought, let me look at peace, you know, because I was disturbed, no peace at all. My mind was disoriented. So I said, let me see what the Bible talks about peace. So under that section peace, I still remember the page number was 200. Right. So I said, wow, 200. Let me go and see this 200. Yeah. And when I saw that, I saw John 14, 27, which mm -hmm. said, I read it out. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I said, wow, somebody is saying he is giving his peace to me. And then when I went back and forth and I saw that it was the Lord Jesus who was giving his peace, I said, I want that peace. That day, uh, uh, I shared this uh, story. I immediately took away the rope and I said, I want to know more about Jesus. And a friend of mine, uh, he said, I can't tell you but there is this electronics professor. Uh, uh, he's a doctorate, he's a double doctorate in microelectronics. Um, he can share about Jesus. So he shared about his life. And then I said, I, he made one statement. He said, at the age of 21, I realized that I was a sinner and I accepted Christ, uh, Christ and became a Christian. I said, oh, you were born a Christian. He said, no, no, no. Uh, I was born a religious Christian. 
but I accepted the Lord Jesus into my life. And that day, 4.30, I also did that prayer. I never changed my name. I never did any tradition. I never did any puja. But I made that simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I am without hope. I am without peace. And from whatever I've read and whatever I've heard from Dr. John Dijewa, you, you have come that you may have peace. Give peace to all of us. You know, and the other verse in that same book, John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In this world, you in me you will have joy. In this world, you will have trouble. Yeah. But be of good cheer for I have overcome them. And I said, I want to overcome that. So I took that decision and uh, boom, you know, I mean, from that time onwards, it is now more than 40 years. Uh, and I, uh, it's a completely different uh, thing. Yeah. So while you celebrate Christmas and all that, uh, in my life, if somebody asks, when is Christmas? I will say Christmas is March 14th, 1970. <laughs> Because see, Christmas in one sense is when Jesus came to the world. Yeah. It is immaterial when he came to the world. Right. For me, when did he come to my life? Right. Right. Yeah. And that was. What a, sir, what a uh, inspirational, uh, at least to me, I feel so much in inspirational because the life was uh, running towards one direction. But at one point in time, the life changed its direction and took the other side and we see how you know um, uh, the Lord Jesus gives the peace for those who truly seek those for those who truly look for the peace uh, what a what a life story sir what a great testimony I mean how ironic it is also uh, that our program is called bliss uh, what it means is a perfect happiness a great joy so your name Anand is just a little bit closer to the, the program that we have, please, a great joy, right? So it's our joy also to share this, the perfect happiness and the great joy with all of our friends, colleagues and neighbors here in US, especially in Austin, Texas. Uh, and I mean, of course, a uh, lot of people around um, all the states are joining this program and uh, they're all, we're all watching you and we're so glad to hear your testimony. Sir, on this uh, Bliss 2021 occasion, what is the message of good news for all of us? Yeah. So I go back at that time. See, what happened was I had lost all hope. I had lost meaning in life. But if you look at LinkedIn, my profile, or if you look at YouTube, by God's grace, I not only got back meaning in life, I got back purpose in life. So the Main thing is we lose our way when we lose our why. Why are we living? Yeah. You know, that I got a sense of purpose. Once I got the sense of purpose, of course, I my first job was with DCM as a management trainee. And from there on, I joined the Tatas and I worked for multi. I had a very fast career uh, track record. In the early days, uh, it would take about five to six years for you to become a manager. I became a manager in only three years. In yeah. Tata's designations was very, very uh, stingy. Now, of course, our HR department is very liberal. You know? They'll give you uh, designations in one grade, in one uh, pay grade itself, they'll give you five manager designation, assistant manager, deputy manager, associate manager, uh, senior manager, and what a chief manager and all that. But at that time, it was uh, uh, difficult. But by God's grace, third year itself, after my career, I became an uh, area manager and uh, moved on and uh, product manager, so on. Uh, things. I grew. But the message that I want to give all of you is find your purpose in life. Why have you come to US? Why are you working in a particular company? And when you get that purpose, you see if you've got the energy, if you've got the resources, to fulfill that purpose. For me, I found that purpose fulfilled uh, through my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so the message that I have for all of you is three questions you need to know the answer for you for yourself. Who are you? Who is your uh, uh, master? And what is your mission? Once you know that, you will be a self-actualized person in whichever company you are working for, whichever client engagement you are uh, doing, whether it is on-site, offshore, no problem. As long as you know the answer to these three questions, 
by God's grace through the Lord Jesus Christ, I knew who I was, I knew who my master is, and I know what my life's mission. Uh, that is my message. What a message, sir! For uh, on this occasion, uh, who are you, and who is your master, and what's your purpose, what's your mission? That gives us a great, uh, inspiring, uh, you know. Uh, uh, inspiring message for all of us to take away. I am so glad, sir, you have joined with us for this 2021. I am really, really delighted uh, to talk to you and to know more uh, about your life and how what changed your life and how things became extraordinary in your life. Right. So I am so glad, sir. Thank you so much for joining with us. Uh, so you, glad uh, to speak to you. Have a wonderful. Uh, time. Uh, I appreciate uh, your time with us. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. And may you truly have a purpose in 2022. Thank you. So everyone who listened to Mr. Anand Pillai today, I mean, you all can have opportunity to follow this great leader through many social media platforms that we have, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So Please, please, uh, please feel free to follow uh, Mr. Anpulai, uh, so so that we can have a, a forerunner where we can just learn from, and it will be a blessing for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, Raj.